This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today. All right, this team last year had uh, just tons of views on their content they made, so we're very excited to bring them back here to have them showcase their current creators. They got a lot of cool stuff going on, and I, I know we had uh, some of our content earlier from them. So Phoenix Force, welcome in, and let us know more about your progress. Yeah, uh, my name is Ethan from Phoenix Force, and I'm going to talk about just our strategy analysis for this game. Uh, we watched the game reveal along with all of you, and our first question was whether to focus on specimens or samples. We realized right away that the 25% increase from eight points for a sample to 10 points for the specimen was just not going to be worth it with the additional like, logistical increase of getting the clips on there. You have to put the sample into the human player zone, the human player has to put the clip on, and like, it's just transferring back and forth and it's not worth it. So on our robot, we're just focusing on samples and that's what we're probably gonna be doing for our tournaments in the future as well. Uh, the dynamics of this uh, like simple pick and place game also, there's some interesting stuff going on with mobility. Uh, this field is a simple 50-50 mirror uh, with the blue alliance being just on one side and not having to cross the field whatsoever. Uh, compared to last year in center stage, uh, this is going to result in a lot less traffic uh, and basically eliminates all, pro uh, all prospects for defense. Uh, we just went with a simple mach mechanism chassis as a result. We experimented around with entering the submersible, uh, but with the large mechanism wheels we had on hand, we weren't able to get the traction required to enter the submersible. So it's not something we're going for, and we really don't think it's worth it because it's going to be very difficult to try to grab just one individual sample uh, like while you're in there around all the other ones. We just don't think it's going to work out. Uh, so our robot, uh, which Jay is about to talk about, is just focusing on samples and trying to get an arm from outside. My name's Jay, and to add on to our good friend Ethan here, uh, I'm going to walk you through kind of why our robot is structured the way it is. As you can see, we've got two sets of Viper slides uh, mounted with a... Uh, a clamp here so we can adjust the angle um, of these slides and we've corresponded it to um, to be able to reach the high goal here which is going to be our main uh, game strategy component and then we opted to use a claw instead of an active intake because we were concerned if there's multiple game elements stacked uh, symmetrically like this we wouldn't be able to um, reliably grab one at a time we might end up grabbing more uh, than we need but my friend Garrick here can talk a little bit about the future modifications we are making to our robot because there's some really cool stuff that he's working on. Yeah, uh, thanks, good friend Jay and Ethan. <laughs> um, uh, I'm Garrick. Um, I'm here to talk about our future plans. As we all know, the night is still young, so we have plenty of uh, plans for tonight, tomorrow, and the rest of the season. Um, we one of our first kind of problems we've noticed with this design is that we have very limited reach into the submersible while we're down. We can only extend about eight inches into it, which allows us to grab a decent amount throughout the match and will probably result in not too much pain on our part. Um, but we decided it would be beneficial to try to address that problem. So we designed, I'm trying to get it with my foot because I'm... <laughs> Uh, we designed this slide that actually, when compressed, is the exact dimensions of our current arm. Um, and all it does is it extends. So we are able to extend all the way to the other side of the submersible, pretty much. Um, it adds extra height, which allows us to kind of use both slides to uh, extend when we're placing in our top bin over there. So it saves more time. Um, we can kind of begin our extension as we're driving, uh, saving more time. Uh, we also don't have a hanger yet. That's coming, don't worry. Um, but our plans have been to either have multiple hooks on one set of slides and kind of ex uh, pull ourselves up gradually, as you kind of see in some FRC games like uh, Rapid React and As Ultimate. Ultimate Ascent. Um, so watching those videos from those matches can be really helpful to get ideas for our hanger. Or we are going to put one hanger on our slides and have a winch to pull us up to the second level. 
uh, thank you. I think we're all done. So Do we have questions. We are done with our presentation. Yeah, just a, a couple. Of, uh, th by the way, that that product looks like something I might be able to get off the TikTok shop or something like that as well too. It's it's pretty awesome. So, uh, so looking at looking at that from your acquisition wise, like you know when you have a claw, like how do you plan on quickly acquiring game pieces? Yeah, we haven't really had any problems picking up individual game pieces, especially when they're out on their own. Um, a claw can be really fast, um, and it allows us to have immediate control of the game element as well. So uh, with a you know active intake, it requires transfer, new mechanisms to hold it, place it, move it. A claw, grab it, drop it, pretty easy. Um, also reduces complexity. Um, and if they are stacked together, um, from our ideas, we couldn't really find any way an active intake would be able to separate um, a large like collection of blocks. So the claw allows us to just move them, slam into them, push them away. So. One thing I will add is that yeah, the geometry of the game pieces this year, by being a triangle that's going inwards, uh, yeah, triangle going inwards uh, on the inside, if you miss the claw slightly, so if you just like shove the claw in there, it's going to slip off of the game pieces that are out of like position. And you're likely only going to grab one uh, and that is an like the, this is a very easy piece to claw in an area of many pieces, which you can also see in our demo that is uploaded to the fun channel, which you can check out. Uh, with the active intake specifically, as we mentioned, we just think there's way too high of a risk of collecting two pieces at once, and it's just really something that we don't want to risk uh, due to the possibilities of penalties that can come with it. All right, last question coming in uh, before we wrap up. Uh, Maximum Voltage asking, with your focus on baskets, how do you plan to avoid congestion with your alliance partner for intaking and scoring? Um, yeah, so I think the biggest thing is just going to be planning out cycle routes. Communication with your alliance partner is highly important in any FTC game, and that is going to be especially important this year. Um, and yeah, there are there might be some roadblocks and there might be some issues with being able to coordinate that. But we just think that the huge time increase that's going to be caused by going for the clips, because the robot has to enter, the robot has to leave, and it's we we think it's going to probably take like four seconds, five seconds per clip whenever you want to clip something onto uh, a specimen. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's a sample. Sorry. Whenever you want to clip something to a sample, it just takes so much time that. On a points per second standpoint, just figuring out the routing with your alliance partner, maybe waiting like a, a few times, it's just going to far outweigh on points per second in our strategy analysis. Yeah, um, there's also another kind of benefit of having an extending arm. Um, we would be able to kind of place from way out here instead of right in front of it, which allows our teammates to kind of be on their side. Um, we saw a lot of success with teams like Gearheads, Mr. Cod, stuff in this state. Um, with uh, robots that can place from the side and really open it up for teammates. So whether they're really, really good and don't need the entire area or they need help and need to be out right in front and dumping straight in, being able to dump around them and kind of play around any teammate is really helpful. Well, Phoenix Forks, thank you so much for showing off your current progress. We can't wait to see what else you come out with, and I'm sure more content to come out as well, too. So give Phoenix Forks a big round of applause and all of our teams from tonight. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com robits to learn more and order today.